I want to show you how to build this really cool circuit today that's inside this pedal called the TerraVerb. It's a really unique circuit and we're going to be building it using one of these Proto breadboards that's only about 55 cents each. And the cool thing about these is you can build loads of pedals really quickly using them. The thing that is so unique about the circuit is that it's a reverb, it's an echo, it's a fuzz, it's kind of a chorus as well. It's got a low parts count and it's just a really, really fun circuit to use and to play with. It's a really unique sounding circuit as well. I put together a quick song just to showcase what this can do. It's capable of some really beautiful, rich fuzz tones along with some really weird stuff as well. Make sure you check out the demo section later on in this video where I break down these sounds so you can hear them individually. Now I came across the circuit in around 2009 when I was repairing a synth module. Now I had to run my guitar through this module just to test it and I was just totally blown away by the fuzz sound. I was like really impressed by how unique and how cool and how fun it was to play. So I traced it really quickly and that's what we're going to be building today, the engine of this, but just on one of these little proto boards. I just wanted to explain how these little boards work really quickly if you've never used one before. The cool thing about these is that they can be used for so many different circuits and built really quickly and on the fly plus they have these little tabs on the side so you can join more than one board together which is pretty awesome prototype boards or breadboards are really just for experimenting finding out what works before you build something more permanent but the cool thing about these smaller ones is that they do have this adhesive back you can easily fit them inside in a fixed pedal enclosure and then you can have something more permanent or something you can actually try at the gig you know each one of these rows is joined internally if i put a part in here say and you just push the parts in Okay, so I've got one leg in here and one leg in here. So all the way along there is all joined to that one leg. Same on this side, but obviously not through there. That centre section is like a divider. So you can put chips and things on these boards as well, op amps and things like that. So this is quite a good example. If I had an input signal coming in here, like a guitar signal, it would go through this resistor, then through the board, up through this capacitor, then out through this resistor and out. So that would be the path. And that shows you how quick you can make these circuits. You can just push components in and create circuits really, really quickly. <laughs> right, let's start putting this together. Now this is kind of gonna be a fairly improvised build here. So first I'm gonna put in this regulator. Now this is gonna be along here. Now these regulators have got three pins. This is your input pin. This pin has to go to ground and that's your output. So if you've got nine volts coming in there, that's ground and that'll be five volts coming out. So I'm gonna put it this way. Just, you just push it in. It's very plug and play style. Okay, so next I'll put in our chip. So that'll have to go there. That top pin there, pin one, that is our input pin. Right, now I'm gonna put a little bit of filtering in there. So I've got one of these capacitors and you just sort of snip the legs. It's gonna be quite big, but anyway, whatever. I might pop it in here. Make sure you get it oriented the right way. I've got my positive side going in next to that pin one and then the negative side is going to go onto the same rail as the negative leg on this regulator here okay so super duper easy now i'm going to sort out all these grounding points first so okay you want to grab a bit of a resistor leg and i'm going to bend that kind of feels like i'm doing a cooking show honestly so now i've got pin three one two three and pin four so they've got to be joined together one, two, three and four. So you see three and four are joined together now. And I'll also want to join the ground from the regulator to the grounding point here. So let's grab 
What should I grab for that? So I just got a small piece of wire and I just stripped it. And then I put this into here. Look at that. Okay, so now those grounds are done. Okay, so let's keep moving down. We've got a need, now we need a 47 nanofarad capacitor. Now that's gonna be going between, what do we got? Pin seven and ground. So I'm gonna bend these legs a little bit. So that's pin seven and ground. Pin seven and that's ground there. Seven and ground, one, two, three, four, yep. So that's my 47 nanofarad in position. Then from pin six, I've got a 1K resistor. I might put this one down like this. There we go. So it's got to be in line with pin six here, out into this area here, just somewhere, because we're going to use that to connect one of our pots to. Right, let's have a look along the other side now. Okay, so let's get a 100K resistor now. Okay, so get your 100K resistor. Make the legs a little longer for this one. Pin 16 and pin two. So the very top pin on this side and pin two. So you're just going to sort of hop right over the whole thing. There we go. I'm going to say lovely. Oh, we might do these ones down here. We'll do all these 10Ks. There's a little cluster of 10K resistors and we want to set them up so they are going to be standing vertical like this. Let me just show you here. I'll snip it. So kind of like that. Not kind of like that. Exactly like that. So that'll fit between two pins. So our first pair, 14 and 13. So 16, 15, 14, 13. Just goes between them like that. There we go. Perfect, 16, 15, 14, 13. There you go, you just gotta make sure you keep an eye on your pins. Then there's another 10K. Same deal, we'll set this up in that sort of vertical style where it's sort of standing on its end. Okay, so this is gonna go between 12 and 13. So we just pop it out here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Perfect, that's in the exact right spot. The next 10K has to go from pin 13 to pin 15. I think we'll keep this one in its vertical sort of style but just spread out a little more. So that's pin 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to pin 15. That's that 10K. Now we need a 10 nanofarad capacitor. I'm going to have to run over here. Okay, 10 nanofarad. We're actually almost done, by the way. This goes between pin 11 and 12. You're going to want to cut this one down again. And because these pins are really close, I sort of bend the, the leg in just a little bit like that. Yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. That filters out a bit of high frequency. Right, and then we've got the modulation resistor. That's a 47K, and that is going from pin 15 to pin 6. Now, I'm probably going to lay this one over the top. Pin 6 and pin 15. Lovely. I mean, it never looks that fancy when you're doing it on these proto boards, but the cool thing is you can just build stuff so quick without soldering. Now, the arrangement here is just something I'm making up on the fly, okay? I'm not actually putting any time into getting this to look a certain way i'm just putting it on as i see it on the schematic that's all i'm doing now here's our input cap input coupling capacitor this is a 100 nanofarad and this is going from pin 16 to just nowhere just to the ear we don't want anything else connected to the other side of that because that's where a wire is going to go and then our output capacitor 4.7 uf it's a very moddable circuit you could kind of go nuts and do whatever just so you know, I've got a parts list down in the description. And if you like this sort of stuff, please hit that like button because it really helps me know what sort of stuff you guys are into and what sort of videos you want me to create. So that would be awesome. Okay, pin 14 to out. So what do we got? 16, 15, 14. Fits on this board so nicely, I have to say. Bloody beautiful. Okay, so that's where we are now. So let's just add our wires now. So we need... Firstly, we need a wire for our input power. So our nine volt input. So you're just gonna get a piece of wire and just strip it. All right, I'm using these strippers here. And then you just poke it into the hole where it's needed. So we have got our nine volts right here. I've left a little pad open for it. Boosh, that is that done. Then we're gonna need our ground done. So we've connected, that's the kind of the advantage of connecting up all those grounds on the board. You just need one ground wire now. And that's going to be connecting here. Beautiful. Ground is done. Okay, so now we need a wire going out to our space control. So that's the one that controls the, the reverb and delay time and all that sort of stuff. And that's from that 1K resistor that we put in. If you put it too much lower than that, you get a lot of latching issues with this circuit I've found. So you kind of don't want to go really much lower than 1K. You can, but if you turn it on and um, it's already set to that low value, it sort of latches up the unit. Okay, next we've got an input. 
So I'm using this super gross blue wire that I've been trying to get rid of forever. Okay, another one. So you just push it into the hole there. That same row of holes that line up with that input side of that capacitor. And then we need an output wire, and that's just going to be in line with this side of this capacitor here. Oh, that is not going in one sec. Sometimes that happens. I mean, sometimes you can actually tin these and make them a little bit stiffer. Okay, that looks like it is all set up and ready to go now. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So normally you'd test it from here. You'd use a whole bunch of alligator clips, power it up and check it. But that's a pretty tedious step. I'm not going to do that. Since it's so easy to put these in and out of an enclosure, I'm just going to pop it in the enclosure and just solder it up really quickly. And if there's something wrong, we can just fix it while it's inside the enclosure. It's pretty basic. Right, it's all wired up and ready to go. I haven't wired up the switch just to make things look a lot simpler. There's a free schematic on my website that shows you how I like to wire up a true bypass switch or a three pole double throw switch. So go over there and check that out. Also grab all the other free stuff too while you're there. I'll put some links down in the description. But let's have a look here how this is wired up. Now, excuse the messiness. I have done this kind of quickly. The nine volt wire is going to my positive nine volt down here, that bottom lug on this DC input jack. So the ground wire is coming around here to the ground lug on my input jack. Then the ground lug on this jack here is going down to the DC input. This is just joining up all the grounds. And also it's gonna join up to my volume pot ground and then also to the ground on the space pot. Okay, so let's just show you the connections here that come from the actual board. So from pin six, we've got this 1K resistor, then we've got a wire coming out to the center lug of a 25K linear taper pot. Now that controls that space control. So the higher the resistance there, the longer the delay times. Okay, so then our input wire here, I've got it going directly to the jack, but that would normally go down to the switch. And the output wire from this 4.7 UF capacitor goes to the volume pot, the input side of that volume pot. Then this side here is grounded, just like it normally would be, uh, lug number one. And then the center, the wiper, would normally go back to the switch, but I've got it going straight out to the jack. So basically I can't switch it on and off, but I'm doing it just for this demonstration. I'll show you the one that I built in a second. I've added a few mods to that too to make it really interesting and a bit more guitar-esque, I suppose. But this is essentially the engine of this circuit. So let's do the test. So to test this, turn your amp on. I think my amp's going. Yep. The way I like to check it is I get that power supply charged up and then I unplug the power supply hit my guitar and then just plug it in. See how I heard that little bit of fuzz just then? So now I'm gonna plug my power supply in. Okay, so you can hear it's working. All those controls are working. So now it is basically ready to go. Always do that test first where you just have the power supply charged but not permanently plugged in. It gives a brief amount of power to enter your effects pedal. And if you don't hear any sound at all, then you need to go and check to see what's happening. Always double check all your connections, especially those power connections. Make sure your 9 volts going to the right place. Make sure that 5 volt coming out of this is going to the right pin, that the chip's orientated correctly, and that your capacitors are also orientated correctly. We're going to go through some of these sounds individually now so you can hear them outside of the mix. Now this is a unit I built for myself that I added a few mods to, and I built it more permanently because it's my birthday today and I just wanted something cool. This pedal just gives some of the most spookiest, most haunting lead tones around. It kind of sounds like you're playing in a weird sort of tunnel. It's definitely unique, really fun, but also really musical as well. I've got the schematic for this exact unit available free over on my website for Plus members, and I've also got a short video there showing the internals of it and how I sort of put it together and explaining some of those controls. So the tone control on this is a simple tilt control. You can add any tone control you want, and it goes from the center being the most balanced sound to being more bassy on this side with less treble, and then more treble on this side with less bass. Kind of, kind of like this. get a really wide range of sounds. The other thing is obviously we've got our volume control, there's a lot of volume in this circuit so you can really drive a lot of different tone stacks really well without having to have additional gain stages. And then you've got the space control so what this does is it if you imagine you're playing towards a brick wall and the space control just means you're moving further and further away from that wall. Okay I've got the setup with no modulation and the tone control in the middle and I'm going to show you that space control. <laughs> So it always adds an element of like a room sound. Then we 
we'll go to the most full-on setting. So I've added onto this one a mid-boost switch. So if I want to use this for a solo, it's quite scooped as it is with that tilt control. So this just flattens out those mids and gives me a bit of a mid-boost. I'll show you what I mean. So it just brings all those mids nicely and in a real natural way, not an extreme crazy like obvious way. Now this one on the back, this controls that modulation. So on the circuit we built today, it's set to full modulation. So I wanted to have a couple of other settings with no modulation like you heard then, or with a little bit of modulation or with that extreme setting. So here it is with a little bit, and it's pretty subtle. If I put this on about half, put that mid switch on eh? If I put it on full modulation, it's way more extreme. So way more crazy, way more heavily modulated repeats. A couple of important things you should know before building this is that each chip sounds quite different and the way it sort of works in that circuit can be a little different, especially with the modulation. Some of the chips modulate up and some of them modulate down. Some of them can have a few extra artifacts and noise. Some of them can be quite hissy. So if you do have that, just replace it with another chip. They're pretty cheap now. If you get an original Princeton Technologies one, I'm sure it's probably more stable, but I kind of like the fact that these lower cost ones are actually pretty crazy and not that stable and they give sort of um, unpredictable results. And the chip I've gotten here is awesome. The other thing you can do too is run a buffered bypass pedal before this unit or even build a buffer into it. That can make it a bit more stable as well and have uh, less issues. But if you build it really well and think about how your lead dress is and all that sort of thing, you shouldn't have any problems. It is an absolute stunner of a pedal. So different from all the other things out there. It adds a lot of really cool texture and some really cool sort of glitchy effects that you can get out of it. It's one of those pedals that once you've had a crack at it, you'll definitely want it on your board just to be different and have something that no one else has. Any Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video this week. It's been a blast putting this together. This is a pedal that I've wanted to bring to life for, I don't know, since 2009. So that's a long time. Have a great week and we'll catch you in the next video.